Mr. Martin, you have one last case. All right. Good afternoon. We'll say we save the best for last. But this is also a rezoning request. Is by building Valdosta LLC uh, requesting to rezone 9.40 acres from conditional R6 to regular R6 zone. Subject property is located at 3660 Mount Zion Church Road. As you see on the zoning pattern, there's R6 here, R6 in the property to the west. There is PRD 10 zoning in the subdivision to the south, which is sort of similar to R6. As you know, PRD zoning does no longer exist. This is a vestige of zoning from decades ago. And it is also adjacent to the city limits. You see that shown here by the green line, and it includes the subject property. It was um, originally, I think, R21 zoning when it was annexed and rezoned back in 2007. It was somewhat controversial at that time with some neighborhoods to the north and east. However, that was before some of these neighborhoods to the west were developed or high density single family R6 type of neighborhood. Um, they are proposing a subdivision here. Um, the conditions that are currently on the property are listed on the front page of your packet, and there are three of them. One is a cut through to Chadwick Place subdivision is required. Number two, all lots must face interior streets. Number three, minimum lot size of 8,000 square feet. Um, condition number one is already a requirement of the development code now. One of the things that has changed since 2007 is the city adopted the LDR. So connection between properties is required, but that is something that is managed through subdivision plat review with the city engineering department, and those discussions have already begun. All of us must face interior streets. When there's a subdivision along the collector road, that is now a requirement in the development code, which was not a requirement in 2007. And then the minimum lot size was because in 2007, when this was being annexed and rezoned, and the controversy surrounding it, um, there was a debate between R6 or R10 zoning, which are 6,000 and 10,000 square foot lot sizes, respectively. So the 8,000 was the compromise. They split the difference. And that's why that condition. Um, that is sort of an awkward thing. It's sort of creating an R8 zoning district, which doesn't otherwise exist. So the property was never developed. It sat for all of these years. We have a different developer who has come along and they're wanting to do an irregular R6 neighborhood, very similar to the one that's to the west, which is Druid Oaks. Um, don't know all the details of the architecture. I'm sure the applicant will explain that. But it's certainly less dense than the Chadwick Place neighborhood to the south. On the aerial, you see the density of the patterns and the rooftops. You see Brandonshire Lane, which stubs out to the north. That's the last remaining stub out for Chadwick, which is about a 180 block subdivision. Um, based on discussions with the city engineer, they have worked out an arrangement to where the two neighborhoods would be connected for emergency vehicles only if needed. In other words, not regular car traffic or even pedestrian traffic. But if there's an emergency situation, and a gate were open by emergency personnel that emergency vehicles could get through from one neighborhood to the other. Uh, we've not had a lot of those emergencies, but if one arises, then at least the pathway would be there. And I think there's some ways to make it an attractive design on the north side of this, um, and I don't think it'd be an issue. But staff's opinion is land use, we're looking at density residential zoning, R6 density certainly fits in with the surroundings. And then the rest of it is simply development standards for a subdivision. That's in more of an administrative process rather than a land use labeling process. In your packet, you have all of these maps. The character area is suburban, uh, which allows all of the residential zoning types. And then there's also, of course, the building, the survey, and then the conceptual layout of the subdivision plan itself, which I think is the next one. And remember, this is a zoning change. We're not approving a subdivision plan. Um, I think there'll be a few changes to this one in a minor sort of way, but that's the basic layout. It's sort of a circular pattern um, with, I think, 42 lots um, of varying sizes. Most of them are right at the R6 minimum. The ones in the corners and on the around and on the cul-de-sacs are a little bit larger. Um, the bottom corners you see are retention ponds. 
And then on the lower left, like we talked about the work session, you see the Brandenshire stub out. And part of what I think would be a good design there is a shifting of the lots, but then make the pathway of the road part of the retention pond property. Because the, the, the pond has to be accessed by vehicles, and that creates a spot for that. So killing two birds with one stone and not pave it. Just simply leave a grassed area with a hard surface so if a, a fire truck or an ambulance has to get through there, they can. Um, almost like adding a little park feature to go to the pond, which would be good for the neighborhood. And there's ways to rearrange the lots to accommodate that. Uh, but the basic pattern, I think, is what you see here. And then one road out to Mount Zion Church Road. Um, the applicant is here. And if you've got any questions for him, and I'm sure you might be curious about details of the neighborhood itself, um, he can address those. But staff is found that consists with the conference plan and our standards for exercise of zoning power. And we are recommending approval of regular R6 zoning for this property, which is basically removing all the conditions from 12 years ago. You may. I'm just curious, uh, and, and this request now is simply Because those are conditions placed on the zoning by city council 12 years ago, and because they put the conditions on there, they're the only ones who can take them off. And because the applicant does not want to, um, he does not want these conditions on the property. Correct, particularly the one that mandates 8,000 square foot lot size. Okay. They want our 6,000. And then we've adopted a new development code since 12 years ago, and so the top two are already in the new development as a requirement anyway, but it's based at the discretion of the city engineer. Though that kind of language was not in the development code in 2007. Okay, so the engineering comment on page four, is that for this current application or was that for the previous application? That is for the current. Okay. And he has given you a lot of commentary there. Right. He normally does not quite as verbose, but we got three paragraphs this time instead of two sentences. <clears throat> and it's partly because there's been a lot of discussion already about how to make the design work. And knowing that the connection between neighborhoods, the primary reason is for emergency vehicles in case there is a situation to get from one, have more than one way to get out of the neighborhood. And in this case, you've got an, an existing one of 180 lots to the south with only one way out. Right. Um, which, but it is a condition that has existed for over 20 years. All right. So engineering is willing to um, is willing to negotiate and in, install a, a gate that would only be used for emergency vehicles. And I see that fire, police, no one has commented. Right. They will get their detailed comments of it when they review a subdivision plan that's formally submitted. Okay. Here they're looking at the concept. The fire department looks at their fire vehicles that are able to make these turns. They don't have to back up anywhere. Okay. That at least initially makes them happy. All right. So that may change. Um, the site plan may change based on those comments. Okay. It might, and I would anticipate right. very minor changes, and that's why this is a concept. Okay. Um, but this has actually been engineered by the applicant's engineer. If that fine print is actually call outs for meets and bounds, it fits digitally. Um, they went ahead and showed that. Okay. Um, but you know, there's a multitude of ways to arrange this to get roughly 42 lots in there. So Matt, the, uh, right after the first paragraph of your report here, which are the three conditions, those were previous conditions. Those are conditions that are currently on the property, right. on the placed by City Council in 2007. So what the applicant is requesting is obviously not to have to connect except vis-a-vis -vis what you've described to us as an emergency thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Say, the current condition gives no choice. The road must be extended. It must have full connection. That's the current condition. Full connection, but not but not full access. Right, and so with that condition gone, it leaves it to the discretion of the city engineer 
has already said that he's fine as long as emergency vehicles can get through there and if about, needed. What about number two, the lot size, they, they have to face the interior still? Or not? That is in the development code. Mount Zion Church Road is a collector road, okay. and in our development code for subdivisions with lots on a collector right. is your street. And you can't nature, have driveways. Because of the nature of the rezoning, we're moving from 8,000 square feet to six. Is that Correct. Right? Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions for staff? All right, if not, is there someone here tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this request? If so, please come forward. <coughs> yes, yes. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. It's Clint Joyner, 3101 Rock Ford Road, here in Dallas. Um, Matt, you did a great job. The only thing that I wasn't familiar with is the emergency gate. Okay. I had no knowledge of that what had been said. Um, I am not wanting an emergency gate. I don't want to have any type of connection with Chadwick at all. Okay. Um, the Drew and Oaks subdivision to the west, I have spoke with several of the residents in there. And they also do not want to have any connections through that because of the 180 so lots that we have, uh, because of the different type of subdivision that we're proposing and what's there now. Um, I'm not saying this as a fact, but I'm telling you what Druid Oaks people have told me that there have been several burglaries over the Druid Oaks and they all, you know, everybody always wants to point to what well, it was them, it was them, it was them. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, I don't know. I wasn't there when the burglaries occurred. But I'm just telling you that they do not want any type of access. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can't see that from here, but the, the road is at 70, what lot number is that? It looks where, like 45, yeah, 46, 46, somewhere that, in there. That is what we are wanting as a building lot. Right. So we are not wanting to connect that at all. But that would be else, exactly where your connection would be, is right through that lot. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. But we want that as a building lot. Okay. Yes. Well, yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Same thing as Drew with us. Just about three bedroom, two bath, with two car garages. We're not going with one car garage. As of right now, we're planning all of them being two car garages. We need something affordable. And frankly, you know, as a builder, the houses are getting more and more and more expensive, but we're thinking about something maybe in the 130s and 140s where... Wait, Sir? Wait, oh, I know. I know. So, so I'm just curious if I could be so to this question. If, if, if city council and engineering says you got to have an emergency gas, what's that do you it doesn't make me happy. Um, it, um, I, if you rode through Chabot lately, I think every one of y'all may can understand why this is a brand new subdivision and we, we want to do a privacy fence all the way across the back. Every time a house is built, that builder is going to install a privacy fence. So it'll all be uh, privacy fits all the way across the back where um, I think people will probably be apt to jump over the emergency gate, but they're probably not going to be jumping over a privacy fence in somebody's backyard unless they're up in a So that's, that's that. Hey, and man, I'm sorry, I, I did not know that. Uh, this about is this. news to me. This is not how we ended the discussion in the building officials conference room. Um, okay. But... I believe we're not talking about a little gate. I'm envisioning a piece of the fence that would be removed by emergency personnel yes. to allow a vehicle to get through. Otherwise, it looks like the fence that's there. Right. Um, as far as lots, as far as shifting these around where lot 46 is, that area becomes part of the detention pond. And then you just sort of shift the dominoes around and add another lot. Because you need certain sizes for the detention ponds. And the so these ponds are up there according to the engineer size. So right. if we moved that lot and made it a road, then we couldn't be able right. to well, that lot becomes we would lose part, a lot. That lot becomes part of the detention pond. Right, we lose a lot. You, know, you add another lot on the west side of the pond. The pond shifts. But I, how can a fire truck access through a retention pond? Through a hard 
part of it. The pond has to have a level place for maintenance. That's not Well, that's how you maintain a pond. Well, <laughs> regardless, you're going to have to have an exception to the code requirement because the code requirement does say um, that there be a connection. Back in 2000 and... Right. Back in the, the old... The current code. The, the old code it was not written in the code. It was the condition of city council. Right. Right. The it was in code. the development code. So, so Matt, before their, before their meeting, city council was, so they have all this worked out between Mr. Joyner, the councilman, and the engineer about this thing? I would hope so. It sounds like there needs to be a little more discussion. But, yeah. but again, as a reminder to the Planning Commission, what is before you is a land use you know, case, so not a right. subdivision. Exactly. That, that, that's why I asked a question to you. If you're just taking the seat off, I don't know why that makes sense come waste of money. But, well, they ha it has to, the only way to get the conditions off of there is to go through the same process that put them there, which was a rezoning request. So, I I'm sorry, uh, guys. So, that road is a requirement in the Planning Commission or in the Planning... In the uh, New Development Code. In it the is New Development a requirement. Code. So, it's not a condition? No. No, it's a Development Code requirement. So, what was the condition of that? The condition was to connect back before this current development code was written. In 2007, it was a different development code. So basically, then it was a condition. Now it's a given. So to Franklin's point, it's almost like... Well, well, well it's, it's a given, given, but the city engineer has the discretion of right. it based on engineering design. But it is now so part of the code. Right, but the condition from city council it ties the city engineer's hands. Right. So, so, so that's my question to you. I hate, I hate taking a place time with No, no, I'm not having that. So that's 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 my question to you. The engineer, are you saying that the engineer's hands are tied? It is a done deal. The engineer's hands are tied under the current zoning condition. He has no discretion. The developments must connect per city council. Okay. What he's requesting is that condition be removed. Right. So it gets removed. Now we're back to just regular development right. code that currently exists, which, which says, requires the connection, but right. at the discretion of the city engineer. Okay. Say so that again. Requires the connection. What? But at the discretion of the city engineer. So that means in terms can, of how that connection that means, that means is made. No. What he is telling you in right. these comments. So the engineer is willing for a connection for emergency vehicles under emergency conditions only, not a regular day-to-day -day connection with vehicles and pedestrians. But he cannot eliminate the need for some type of connection. The city he he believes, and I agree with him, there needs to be some type of connection there for emergency situations, if one should arise. So he needs something and being able to do it or not is two or two different things. So if he believes there should be a connection, does he also have the authority to say there will not be a connection? He, well, that's the question for him. The development code says there needs to be something there, but at his discretion. Okay. And is it because of the road is already in existence going through that subject? Correct. Property? Brandon Shire right of way so, stubs out to the property line. It mm -hmm. goes all the way to the property line. It, it does. touches the property line. And I pulled like, from the discussion yes, before that we had, I did pull the plaque. Yeah. There is no reserve strip there. Is there a ditch there? There is a ditch. So the road doesn't go that, all the way. Which means that's got to be addressed part of the construction designs is how something gets across the ditch. So the ditch. Uh, that I yeah. don't know. So I don't know which side of the property line it's on. Yeah. I have a feeling it's on the Chadwick side. Oh. If I had to guess. And the road doesn't go all the way to the right. right, and that makes it a little more complicated. Yeah, that's smart. No, it's good. good. Okay. Hey, again, I want to. They, keep did, in mind, this, great job. what you're looking at is conceptual layout. This is not construction right. drawings for a subdivision by any means. They have gotten nowhere near to that point. Um, but you have a right of way that stubs out from an existing neighborhood from 20 plus years ago to the subject property they touch. And the development code, code requires it to be extended. Right. With the current conditions on the piece of property, the engineer's hands are tied. Correct. But if we take it back to regular R6, then the engineer could have the discretion right. to overlook or change that requirement. Right. Which is okay. what he's trying to do with these okay. problems. Correct. Right. Thank y'all.
right. trying to satisfy the engineering need to have it. <clears throat> okay. But still, 99% of the days or more okay. separate the neighborhoods. All right. Commissioner Graham, did you have something to say? Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Wallace? Well, um, to the point that was being discussed about the concern of uh, making the connection, in the development review comments under engineering, the last paragraph, it says engineering understands that the developer is concerned that the connection will foster problems related to undesirable vehicular and pedestrian traffic through the proposed development. Therefore, engineering is willing to approve installation of a well-designed crash gate at the point subdivision boundary line. Such gate should be uh, designed to allow emergency service vehicles passage in either direction while prohibiting access of non-emergency vehicles and pedestrians. Right. So this is going to be a substantial, well-designed, well-engineered gate to do all that. It right. would be, I would think, just as effective as a privacy thing. Right, and my, well, not the engineer, but I would have a privacy fence through there with a section that with the proper tools from the emergency vehicles, knowing where the bolts are, to be able to dismantle a section of it to allow the fire truck to come through. But still eight feet tall or whatever the rest of it is, so it functions like the rest of the fence. So this, it's Otherwise sounds, you're going to have pedestrian crossing. So this sounds like engineering is not going to allow there to not be a connection, but they're willing to work in designing a gate that will <clears throat> help prevent um, from the Chadwick side vehicles and pedestrians from entering this new subdivision. Right. Okay. Any yeah. discussion? I think we exhausted our time in favor, but I will allow one more if there's anyone else here tonight who wishes to speak in favor of the request. Okay. Anyone here tonight wishing to speak against the request, please come forward. Anyone wishing to speak against the request? All right, if not, turn it back to the commissioners for any discussion. And if not, I'll entertain a vote. Madam Chair, regarding VA 2019-05, I make a motion that we recommend approval to the City Council of Alvosta on the applicant's request and for what staff has presented to us. All right, All right. we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those voting in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All those voting against, and it is unanimous. All right. That is it for those agenda items. Um, 